Today I'm riding something a little bit different, a little bit niche perhaps, something you don't see out on the roads every day. This is the MV Augusta Dragster 800RR. This is from Wheels Motorcycles. Wheels Motorcycles are now an MV dealer. So they've got a few MV demos and they said to me, Chopsy, we've got one of these on demo. Do you want to have a go? And I, of course, I said, yes, please, because this is a bike I've ridden the Dragster version, no, I've ridden the Brutale version of the 800 a couple of years ago. It's a triple, we did a triple test when I was working with, doing a bit of work with PB, we had the, uh, the MT-09 SP, we had this, we had the Street Triple, and, uh, you know, so this is, a, this is a fantastic bike, but it had a few little quirks, you know, it wasn't 100% all of the time. So this is a first ride video, unfortunately, this bike has i think it's about eight miles on the clock it's literally pdi'd it's brand new so in this first ride video it's going to be like my tuono video i can't give this any real beans in this video so i'm going to do another video once i put a few more miles on it where we'll give it some wellington but for this one we're going to it's going to be a first ride impressions video what's the riding position like you know what's it like to ride what are its manners like we can test out the low speed manners on this bike we can give it a little tickle but we just can't rev it out really and i think this is this this bike is 140 horsepower from an 800 140 horsepower this thing loves to rev and i think it's going to sound glorious but without further ado before we jump on this fine machine you know the routine chop z roll the intro So, without further ado, let's jump aboard. Powering her on, first thing you notice is it goes through this little check thing and you have to wait, you know, batteries checking the bike, status, or oh, everything's okay, no errors found. As if it's gonna quite often flash up errors. <laughs> also turns over for a little while before it starts, which is initially a little bit worrying. Has a TFT for this year. The last bike I rode had a, an LCD and it was showing its age a lot. I think it was 2017 when I last rode one of these and it was showing its age a little bit. This has all been revamped now. But anyway, let's go. Straight away, I can tell you when I can rev this a bit more, it is going to sound glorious. You know, it's a bit muted on, on, on idle when it's when it's idling, but as soon as you ride it, it's got an amazing induction roar, and that's what I remember actually from the old bike. The sounds it makes are fantastic. So, but we'll come on to that. First impressions jumping on board. The first thing you notice is the bars are humongous, absolutely humongous. And then you've got these integrated mirrors on the end with little lever guards. But the bars, despite looking even bigger because of the mirrors, are actually really wide. I think it's the widest bars I've ever only naked I've ridden you've got sort of loads of leverage and if you look it's actually on clip-ons it's not even like conventional bars it's on like some clip-on arrangement so that's you know that's I like that that's different I'm all for being a little bit different they do this in two versions they do this with this thing called an SCS which I think is basically like a recluse recluse automatic clutch so even on idle it's like a a squirt and go really it's sort it's of it's fully automatic and then of course you've got the quick shifter and blipper so they do that version this isn't that version this is the non i think it's called scs they call it i don't know what the acronym is i'll find out for the next video but this one doesn't have it i think that's about another 400 quid for the fully automatic bike i know those recluse clutches you can get them it's, a, it's sort of an enduro thing to save having to use the clutch and they've tried it on one of these i don't know how it would work but i'm quite pleased this doesn't have it this is just conventional quick shifter blipper as you would normally expect and this is the rr version this also starts with a base model which i think is about twelve thousand pounds this is the rr dragster this is seventeen thousand one hundred i believe and i'll pop it on the screen if i've got that wrong but so this isn't a cheap bike oh it's <laughs> The suspension's quite firm, but we'll come on to that in a minute. This isn't a cheap bike. It's a £17,000 motorcycle. 
but it is Italian Exotica. So first things first, riding position. It's got massively wide bars, so you've got a big wide stance on the handlebars. The seat locks you in, it's quite sculpted, so you can't move around back and forward on the seat. Um, your feet are nice and low. Nice and low on the feet position, I'd say even a little bit lower than the likes of the Tuono, but they are back a little bit, a little bit behind your hips, I would say. And there's a little, you're a little bit cantered forward onto these wide bars as well. So I think it's pretty comfortable but it's definitely what I'd call a sporty naked position. You're not right upright, you've got a little bit for you, and a bit of a, a little bit of a crouch to, to make you want to go. You know, it's an aggressive naked position, which I'm all for, actually. The handling, that's the first impressions of the handling. As I say, this bike is brand new. The tyres have done eight miles, so we've got to scrub them in a little bit. I think they're Diablo Rosso Corsa threes, we we'll double check that when we pull over, but I think that's what they are. It's got Marzocchi forks, which Embry, Envy always use Marzocchi. I've never been particularly impressed with the Marzocchi setup until I tried the BMW S1000 models, which also have the Marzocchi forks, and they're fantastic. So I'm going to reserve judgment. I can tell it's it's a firm setup. It's quite an aggressive setup. It's bouncing me around a little bit. Um, you know, it's uh, it feels stiffer. I'd say stiffer than the Speed Triple RS at the moment. So I may play with the Twiddlies and see what we can do with the suspension. But first impressions, it's lively, it's aggressive. You know, this bike is all about really, I guess, the Sunday morning excitement, going out and throwing it around on those lovely 60 mile hour li limit roads and just you know the feedback the fun this bike is all about the exhilaration exhilaration of riding a motorcycle and i love that i've got a lot of time for that at the moment yeah that induction roar i, could, I can't wait till i can open this up a bit more because i can tell you already this is going to sound amazing the gear throw is huge it feels like you're pushing the pedal really a real big distance to change gear and they got them down. I think that's got a really wide sort of throw on the gear lever, which maybe makes it a little bit easier to get it in gear perhaps. Perhaps that's why they've done that, so you've got a bit more... But yeah, you've got to really move your foot to get it in and out of gear, but it's a nice click. When it goes in, it goes in nice and precise. You can feel it click in through your boot. Yeah, quick shift and blipper seem to work pretty well. Not, not the smoothest I've ever tried, but actually pretty decent. And that's at relatively low revs, so we'll see what that's like when we uh, get a few more miles on. Direction changes, it's pretty, uh, pretty lively, actually. I think all the rake, all the uh, geometry of the chassis has got it set up pretty darn lively. The bike weighs 175 kilograms dry, I believe. It could be a little bit less than that because on one website I saw, on, on, the, on the MV website, in one of the specifications, it says it weighs 165 kilos dry. When you go into the detailed specifications, it says it weighs 175 kilos dry. So it's, it's one of those figures. It feels light, it does feel light, perhaps a little bit heavier than the likes of the Street Triple the Street Triple RS and probably heavier than the 890 Duke but nonetheless it's, it's a bigger bike it's, it's physically bigger than those machines I think as well so I can excuse it a few extra pounds being a fatty I like a bit of girth I like a bit of motorcycle beneath me I don't like these tiny little minuscule middleweights <laughs> I like a bit of bike I've got it in uh, race mode. Obviously, this has got all the latest tech. You know, it's, it's got an IMU, it's got the coring ABS and all of that. You have three modes. I've just cycled through them. There's a sport, there's a race, and there's a rain mode. So there's no road mode. <laughs> all of them. And there's a custom. There's a custom, of course. So hopefully we can set something up in the custom. But all of them are actually quite aggressive. To that they're all quite aggressive on the throttle apart from the rain which is obviously nicely flattened off 
but the race and the sport, I can't feel a great deal of difference between them. Already it's sounding glorious. This is going to be a bike which is going to be very difficult to run in nicely. <laughs> Everything about it is trying to get you to push it on. It wants to be ridden fast. It, you know, the, the riding position is quite aggressive, the engine note's aggressive, the suspension's quite aggressive. This is definitely a back lane scratcher and this is going to take uh, a lot of willpower to, <laughs> to run this in without opening it up. But I'll do it! I'll do it! Wheels, don't you worry, this will get the full chocks proper running. The display is actually quite nice, a nice little rev layout, I like that, just a, you know, a basic analogue looking rev counter, speeds prominent in the middle and what I like about it, and this is, this is on quite a lot of Italian bikes, the speed is like instantly updated, it's not like on a lag, so it's like instantly refreshing the speed and the Tuono's like that and I like that, I like my displays to be, the refresh rate to be fast on them, not only the bike's fast, the refresh rate on the screen is fast as well. Right, handling, what's going on here, supercar club? We have to be a little bit careful because I've got to bed these tyres in, this will get them started. Oh, it's Festival of Speed today. Goodwood Festival of Speed is on, that's where all these cars are coming from. Yeah, handling... It's quite lively, I would say. You know, it's going to change direction quickly. Hard to say, until I bedded the tyres in. I need to push a bit harder, I can't push hard enough. If it's anything like the old dragster I rode, the harder you pushed it, the more it rewarded. If you were tentative with it, it never felt quite right. You had to really push it on to get the best from it. And I suspect this is no different. I can see we don't appear to have any sort of fuel gauge as part of the display. Let's have a little cycle through what we've got here. Oh, we've got some lean angles. We've got some inertia, little display things. Looks like that doesn't tell you what your maximum lean angle was though, so you can't actually look at it while you're in the corners to find out, which is uh, a bit of a waste of time. There's a little bit of vibration on the bike. Yeah, there's a little bit of vibration through the seat, actually. There's quite a lot of vibration through the seat from the engine. There's a little bit of vibes in the bars. I don't think it's uh, too obtrusive but I'll keep you posted on that one I can notice a few but uh, that could improve over time a little bit because this bike has got so few miles on it but I doubt it I think it's just going to be a little bit buzzy let's try it on a bit of a faster corner try and hang out the seat a little bit yeah that sculpted seat yeah it's not great to hang out of that sculpted seat is a uh, is uh, not the best to hang out of it's quite it doesn't feel natural to hang out of it that's a bit of a shame but you may get used to that also when you're gripping the bike with your legs it's got a bit of a bump here a bit of a lump on the lower part of the fuel tank which uh, you sort of leg you've not got a nicely sculpted tank to wrap your legs around you're a little bit of a sticks out a little bit so i can tell you that it's quite an aggressive bike to ride you know this isn't a commuter bike is it let's be honest you know mv sell motorcycle art is what they will tell you is what they sell and uh, this is this is a lovely beautifully finished bike but it's very much geared up as a as a performance machine you know it, it's i guess it's like the, the lamborghini of the motorcycle world really and uh, yeah you get that feel from it you know i must admit the old one i rode hang on a second we've got a corner the old brutale 800 i rode was 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 hideous in town you know it had this horrible like surging it used to do on on the clutch you know when you blend the clutch out it would like surge it was all over the place sort of on idle it was it was really rather unpleasant to ride slowly and only really worked when you opened it up 
I think so far this is actually ride quite nicely going slowly it wants to go fast I can tell it's just itching to go fast I'm having to hold it back but it, it seems the mannerisms it, its manners have been improved when you're not going fast the gearbox is nice yeah, it's got this long throw on the gear lever but it's very precise it's nice quick shift and blipper is 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 good you know not the best ever but very very good better than most and it seems to be quite nice you know at the slower speed it's a little bit snatchy i think if you were going a lot of town work i think you'd have to go into rain mode to, to sort of <laughs> stop that instant response but uh, it's, it's just aggressive i don't think it's snatchy it's just aggressive they just got it tuned aggressively the throttle response let's test out the bottom end of it it actually seems quite strong the bottom end let's go for third gear well, i don't want to overload it too much because i'm running in but let's go sort of third gear 4000 revs <laughs> got a lot of grunt a lot of bottom end grunt you know it's a triple as i've said many times a brilliant configuration a triple gives you that grunt of the likes of a v-twin but with the straight four revving i mean this bike revs i think i think peak power on this bike is at twelve and a half thousand rpm i'll pop it on the screen i'm sure i had a look and it's twelve and a half thousand rpm and peak torque is at ten thousand rpm so it's all at the top but even still that is pretty decent bottom end the handling i'll put it back down my uh, my hill climb road uh, there's a discovery in front i'm not 100 percent convinced by the handling yet i may need to spend a little bit more time on the bike yeah it could be okay i need to spend a little bit more time and i'll feed back what the handling's like the suspension's very stiff but i don't think perhaps it's set up properly We'll have a little bounce on it when we uh, stop for the walk around in a minute but i think it could use some tweaking actually so i may have a play around with the twiddlies and see if i can just make it a little bit nicer perhaps the brakes are brembo's but they're not m50s or stylemas they're sort of that they're, they're a mono block but they're not the the high spec brembo's they're the same versions which are on the uh super sport ducatis <laughs> They work well enough you know but it's they're a little bit flat feeling and tiny little bit wooden a tiny bit compared to the best of the best brakes but they are acceptable but for seventeen thousand pound motorcycle i would have perhaps liked higher spec front brake setup the mirrors well they're uh, they're big Ooh, we've got a corner the mirrors stick out a lot i think if you're really laying it down you may even be able to touch them down on the ground <laughs> they stick out that far but pretty clear actually good visibility behind a little bit of vibration this one isn't set so well you've got to adjust you know move the uh the bar in sort of up and down to get that adjusted right that's not quite right for me i'm gonna have to play with that this one is okay and actually you've got no shoulder so far out you've got no shoulder in there you know it's just there it is just there your rear visibility so they actually work pretty darn well and if you do come to traffic you can pull them in and do that with them but then it takes you a little while there we go to get them back and where you want them but yeah they do pull in for for traffic and stuff because you would not be able to filter with them like that the mv dragster 800 rr a fantastic looking bike i mean you can't deny it's fantastic some people have really criticized it i put a post up on instagram people said oh what's that you know most people though agree it, it looks incredible it's an incredible looking thing i mean these wheels alone i mean look at them they've got like billet billet aluminium hubs and then like this sort of spoked design same with the rear as well you know obviously forged aluminium billet centers with these and they just look incredible it just looks incredible it looks like it's like powder coated black and then it's got uh, laser etched you know logos on the wheels and stuff but fantastic fantastic looking wheels i think the brutale version is more or less the same but it doesn't have those spoke wheels it has more of a conventional you know cast type wheel 
you know, it's only the dragster which has these sort of really rather special rather special wheels the exhaust of course is you know a typical mv3 pipe setup you know they just they just do style so well mvs don't they um i say it's very quiet this bike's obviously euro five but even the back you know that the cat is a nice sort of polished stainless finish down here and the headers are all stainless you know and they're starting to go a little bit of a nice color you know just the design of those headers is nice as well the engine was assembled by silvo zanon silvo zanon assembled the engine so you know you have a named it shows you who made the engine so anything goes wrong with that i want his email address i want his personal phone number i'm going to be ringing him the fuse box is easily accessible which sort of worries me a little bit <laughs> why does the fuse box need to be easily accessible oh there's also this hole here <laughs> it's a big hole under the seat i mean it's just it's just about the style isn't it the style of the bike with this like hole in here another thing which is nice you may be saying well how does the rear pillion sit on the bike well here you go there's your rear pillion pegs they fold down you didn't even notice them did you the rear lights are bizarre is i think the only the only word for it i mean the back end is very it's odd it's a little bit odd there's like a little mesh pieces here mesh pieces here and then these like you know drl lights around the back it's uh i like it i think i like it single-sided swinging arm from the other side again all looks nice you know quality looks great little details like the sort of aluminium tank pad is nice you've got nice mv logos on the fuel cap you've got this rather nice dragster you know laser etched in the aluminium there it's also got an olin steering damper with some manual adjustment on it here as well these are the clip-ons i mentioned you know a naked with high clip-ons it's, it's quite odd bike also has buttons for launch control and cruise control I didn't play with that i need to play with that i think it's only single button cruise control which is a bit of a pain i mean why you need a button for launch control you don't do you have some more cruise control buttons make it easier it is the same headlight that was on the brutale rr with like this red piece on the inside the drls around i like the front light design i think it looks really good i like how the clocks are integrated you know then it's the clocks don't look like they're just plopped on top they've got sort of a bit of aluminium around and there's some integration into the headlight it sort of flows so i like that i like how the clocks a lot of nakeds it's like the clocks have just been dropped on as an afterthought not so on this i also like the red rocker covers it's got a red rocker cover i also think it would look lovely with this frame in red as well not black because it's got the little red accents in the stickers if the frame was red as well i think that would really finish it off but maybe they thought it would look too ducati with the red frame but i do like the red the red rocker covers oh she's gonna be lively on the front wheel i think when she's uh, running oh, 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 i'm gonna like that yeah already she's lively oh yes oh yes i'm gonna like this and uh that was wheeling without any didn't seem to be doing anything to try and stop that wheelie then so i know i've got the uh front lift control on zero i think it's also got an anti-stoppy thing on this as well i'm not testing that i don't do stoppies but that that wheelie control was on zero maybe that's off wheelie control off if you can have wheelie control off and traction on wow 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 wowzers that's what i like and of course the elephant in the room oh, oh yeah i like that the elephant in the room i'm not talking about me i'm talking about the mv reliability <laughs> because you can't mention mv augusta without someone saying Ooh, good luck when it's on the back of a tow truck i mean they don't have the best uh history of reliability do they i think it's probably the worst of the italian um, three let's say you know your aprilia your ducatis your mv i think the mvs probably have the worst reputation for reliability but mv have tried to address that because this bike now comes with a three-year warranty 
it's the only manufacturer of the big Italian brand which will give you a three-year warranty. It's two year with Ducati, it's two year with Aprilia, it's three year with MV, which is, uh, I think they're, tr you know, they're trying to uh, reassure people, <laughs> I guess, that they don't have to worry. So obviously I'm not going to get to find out what the reliability is like on this bike in the couple of weeks I'm going to have it. If there are any issues in those first couple of weeks, I'll of course let you know, but uh, if there is any issues on a brand new motorcycle like that, I'd say something's gone very wrong. And this is just a little niggle, you know, a, a new bike niggle, which can always happen. But uh, yeah, three year warranties on all MVs now. That's quite appealing. So there we go, first ride on the MV Augusta 800RR Brutale. Lovely bit of kit. A lovely, beautiful machine. Absolutely lovely. I'll get a few more miles on it. We'll get a couple of hundred miles on it and then we'll start to open it up a little bit. Because I think this is, you know, that, this is what this bike is all about. It's, this review is almost pointless because this bike is all about the thrill, the acceleration, the sound when you open it up. So I do apologise that this review is so useless because we can't do anything exciting, but uh, I've got to respect a brand new motorcycle. I think that's the end of this video. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe to see the uh, the part two, if you like, when we start giving this bike a bit of razzing, when we start opening it up. And I'll play with the suspension. That front is too bouncy. We'll sort that. We'll try and sort that. And uh, come back and join me for another ride on this machine when I spend a bit more time with it. And I'll let you know all of the little ins and outs, the details as if this could be a bike you would want in your garage and uh, first impressions is hmm it could well be huge thank you to wheels motorcycles for uh, loaning me this um really appreciated so as i say wheels are now full mv dealers so they're carrying the full range of bike, a full range of mvs at wheels motorcycles so check out the links below go and have a look at their website this, by the time this video comes out, this will probably be back with wheels, so get yourself booked in for a test ride on this exact machine. It'll be fully run in by the chops and ready to go. <laughs> See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Boy. I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>